Like Tony, I haven't been in Parliament, or uh, well, wasn't in Parliament for 50 years, and I suppose being a, a Welsh nationalist, if I'm still there in 50 years, it'll be an admission of failure. But uh, while, uh, while I am there, I want to be a bit of a civilising influence. Over the road at the moment in Parliament, in the House of Commons, they're discussing the, the debate on the abolition of slavery 200 years ago. Now, this is some kind of metaphor, isn't it, for the reason behind today's event. There they are rather ponderously discussing an injustice that was put right 200 years ago while they're refusing to discuss an injustice that is ongoing every day in Iraq and Afghanistan at the moment. <laughs> and it's, it's rather odd, isn't it, that Tony Blair feels he can say sorry for the wrongs of past generations but not utter a single word of apology for his own actions himself. Political apologies of a time lag of 200 years in this place, it seems. Blair is leaving the political stage as we heard, and not a moment too soon as far as I'm concerned. But look who's queuing up to move in. Gordon Brown and David Cameron, who backed the war and who themselves refused to apologise to the people of this country and to the people of Iraq. They don't want to talk about it. Of course they don't. The decision to go to war, they say, is water under the bridge. But how can it be water under the bridge when every day people are still drowning? When every day our presence there in that country is a violent provocation? When every day their silence, Cameron and Brown, makes a mockery and sham of our democracy in this country? But there are politicians, there are politicians prepared to speak out. In Spain yesterday, rebel members of the conservative Partido Popular uh, said for the first time that the war was wrong. Uh, Michael Ancrum, uh, who said, voted against Trident last week, who uh, said that uh, we should talk to Hamas, and who has called for the immediate withdrawal of British troops from Iraq. Michael Ancrum. <laughs> the, uh, I remember who, Michael Ancrum. He was, the, uh, he was the shadow foreign secretary who summed up for the opposition that was no opposition on the night of the fateful uh, uh, d decision to support the war in Iraq. What a Damascene conversion. What a Damascene con I knew he was, he was summing up because I was heckling him at the time. But he now agrees with us. And the Australian Labour Party yesterday once again has called for the withdrawal of Australian troops from Iraq. There is movement even in places like a parliament. And we heard at the beginning of the day, Dennis saying, telling us that this was a moment of decision. And I know that he is right. The decisions that we make today, the actions that we fail to take, will cast a long shadow over the rest of this century. And we, if we're not careful, they will come back to hurt us and to haunt us. Uh, firstly, as we heard, our reliance on nuclear weapons, and the vote on Trident, that will spawn 20 or 30 new nuclear states because what a, what a signal we're sending uh, to, peep, to uh, other nations. We will pulverize you unless you develop your own weapons of mass destruction. That's the signal we're sending to every repressive regime on the planet. Uh, secondly, arms exports. Our shameful role as the, as the world's second biggest arms exporter means that we are contributing more than most to sowing the seeds of conflict uh, in this world, and all with the support of a Labour government that thinks that saving jobs is somehow more important than saving lives. Thirdly, the war on terror, the first war in history that created the very thing it was meant to defeat, the number of terror attacks up seven times compared to what they were before the invasion of Iraq. And finally, look at our record of backing repressive regimes uh, across the world because it suits our present purpose. That stores up a res reservoir of resentment amongst the young people in those countries. Where is our passion for democracy and human rights when we are shoring up the corrupt regime in Saudi Arabia? We have a delegation in Parliament as we speak from Kazakhstan. Again, a, a regime with a terrible record in human rights but a convenient ally in the so-called uh, war and terror. So what must change? Instead of, instead of exporting arms, we should convert our military industry to civilian use. We should stop training the armies of human rights abusers, abolish nuclear weapons and use the savings to invest in international aid. We should reform the UN. 
We should reform the UN to allow fair representation to poorer countries and allow ordinary people's voices to be heard so that people's assemblies right across the planet can be heard. And we should stop trying to maintain this cruel imperial fiction uh, that we punch above our weight, uh, so-called. Instead of trying to become, instead of trying to uh, remain a great power, we should become uh, a power for good. And finally, we should support the efforts to have a crime of aggression written into the statute of the International uh, Criminal Court. Because why? Because we know, we know this terrible in war in Iraq. It wasn't a preemptive attack to prevent war. It was a preemptive lie to promote war, and the man that was responsible needs to answer for his crime. Thank you.